Jeffrey Jefferson Brain Research Centre, or the GEF as we like to call it. it. Its scope is neurological disease, but in particular we focus on, on brain tumours, stroke, dementia and Parkinson's disease. So the stroke research we're doing here has lasted three decades. And it started with uh, Nancy Rothwell, the now the president of the university. And it's been a real focus because there have been no way to do treatments in stroke. And we have a really strong setup in Manchester because we link very closely between the university, the basic science and research, and the clinicians over at the hospital. There are two types uh, of stroke, ischemic, we have a clot, and hemorrhagic, we have a bleed into the brain. Ischemic stroke, we have some treatments for. Hemorrhagic stroke, we have no treatment, so therefore it's really important we're doing this research to find those new treatments. Hemorrhagic stroke occurs in about 15% of all strokes, and yet the impact on patients is similar to ischemic stroke, which is much more prevalent. And that's because the bleeding in the brain causes such damage that, sadly, many of these patients, up to 40%, will die at one month. We need to generate new models for intracerebral hemorrhage research to advance and improve on our existing model systems to really answer some questions that we haven't been able to answer with the current systems we already have. So for example, we can utilise zebrafish models to study aspects of how the brain recovers after a bleed has occurred. And we can also use uh, human cell systems where human blood has been applied to these cells to study aspects of the pathology, such as inflammation. All animal research aims to address the three R's framework. So that's reducing animal numbers, uh, refining our methodologies, and replacing animals with lower order species where possible. Our models are integral to the three R's approach. A uh, zebrafish larval model is a partial replacement. We don't need surgical interventions, we just need one breeding pair of adults to produce the eggs in which for our experiments. And a human in vitro model is a complete replacement of animal products because we use alginate, which is plant-derived. Zebrafish are an advantageous model system for studying intracerebral hemorrhage, primarily because we can uh, have models that exhibit spontaneous brain hemorrhages, which differs from the most commonly used rodent models where surgery is required to induce brain hemorrhage in those systems. So we have genetic and chemical models which allow for these non-invasive brain hemorrhage uh, inductions in the zebrafish larva. We've shown with our research that spontaneous brain hemorrhage in zebrafish larva leads to comparable pathologies to what we see in the rodents, but most importantly in the patients. And one key advantage of uh, the zebrafish larval system is that they allow for high throughput drug screening. So we can test libraries of drugs to see if we can identify compounds which are potentially capable of reducing brain cell death after hemorrhage. Zebrafish are being used more and more as model organisms for research due to a number of practical and scientific advantages over rodents. Breeding pairs can lay about a thousand eggs at a time, and these can be collected externally without harming the adults. Eggs develop very quickly into larvae and cells start to divide within 20 minutes. This makes them very adaptable to genetic manipulation in order to generate transgenic animals or for modelling human diseases. Larvae aren't protected by law until five days post-fertilisation, when they start to feed spontaneously. Specifically for stroke research, they're advantageous to rodents, as they're see-through in larval stages and internal organogenesis and disease processes can be visualised non-invasively. We can observe in real time when a hemorrhage occurs, how neuronal and immune cells respond to damage, and how fish start to recover in as little as 24 hours. The zebrafish lime we use at Manchester is called Bubblehead and has a hypermorphic mutation in beta pigs. At two days post fertilisation, they have spontaneous brain specific hemorrhages and the accompanying edema causes swelling in the head. This animation is demonstrating what happens in a healthy fish and in the bubblehead mutant to cause a brain hemorrhage. In normal development, endothelial cells lie in the blood vessel and make tight junctions between them to stop blood leaking out. This is aided by cholesterol, which provides sites for protein anchoring in the cell membrane. The actin cytoskeleton within the cells remodels with the aid of beta pics, a row GTPase, in order to move the proteins to the cell surface to provide these tight junctions. Beta pics is mostly expressed in brain endothelial cells, and in our homozygous mutants, the protein has reduced function and there is less cytoskeleton remodeling. Without protein anchoring at the cell surface, there's a loss of tight junction, 
and leaky gaps form between the endothelial cells. At the onset of circulation, red blood cells move out of the blood vessel and into the surrounding brain tissue, causing a brain hemorrhage. There are already disadvantages to using a zebrafish larval model, uh, and that's why we really want to develop a human system in vitro. So traditionally, to model hemorrhage in vitro, we've added hemin into cell culture to damage the cells. But here we've encapsulated whole blood in alginate, and this provides a physical distance between the cells and the blood, but also allows for controllable lease of those hemotoxic compounds into the cell culture medium that are going to injure the cells and cause pathology, but not kill the cells. Here, whole blood is mixed with alginate and extruded through a 150 micron nozzle. A vibration frequency is applied to the liquid stream to create droplets and an electrostatic potential disperses the stream. These beads are then collected in a calcium chloride bath and gelate. To provide an added structural layer to the model and offer a physical barrier between the blood and these cells, these beads are then encapsulated again in an alginate gel containing hyaluronic acid and chitosan nanoparticles. These model hemorrhages can be added to cell culture and allow us to investigate the impact on specific cell types in isolation or in cold culture. So the MIR that we're targeting is replacement. Uh, zebrafish is a perfect model for that because it replaces rodents in the respect that you can get hundreds of embryos from one grazing pair and then you can go on to use those embryos in stroke work and heart work and you can look at the embryos at different stages of development right up until day five, until they're protected. From an ethical standpoint, to stop using zebrafish and other animal models in general, that would be the end goal and just move towards more human in vitro models. These new models that have been developed are really exciting. Both the zebrafish models and the human model it's, it's important to have both because the zebrafish models are very high throughput and the human model system is also high throughput but is very translatable in that it shows that things that are happening are similar to what will happen in the humans as well. And it adds to what we call our toolkit. To find these breakthroughs we desperately need, we need as many different things as possible. And these are really adding to what we've got to find and, and answer the important questions. I think they bring really important advances that will help us get to the point we need to do is to find those desperately needed new treatments.